welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, we're finishing up the VQS build by Tamiya. If you haven't seen the first build video of this, go check that out because it won't make much sense coming in from here. I'll put a link up here, go check that out. Done, lovely. Right, where do we get to? Well, we're on page 16, number 38. I've just finished the front shocks. Um, now, I didn't do much filming of these because uh, if you've seen any of my videos, you've probably seen these being built loads of times because there's no difference between most of the cars. The only little two tips that I can give to you is um, I'll put two pictures up here with the oil in, when you've just put it in, with the air bubbles in, and then what it should look like afterwards. Don't rush it. One thing that I found that works really well with me is I have these uh, Tamiya screwdriver set. I place them in there and that sits them upright and then I leave them for 10 minutes or so until they've completely cleared. Depends on your oil. This kit uses soft oil, which means the bubbles clear quicker. Also, it's quite warm in the house, so that helps as well. Now, another tip is to get consistency from both shocks is you want to build them exactly the same. Do them together, don't do them separately. What I do is once you put the, uh, when you're about to put the oil in, raise the piston up about 20%, Put the oil in, then wiggle it around because you're trying to get the air out from behind the piston. Then top it all the way up, leave it to soak, uh, leave it to stand until the air goes. Once you've got them, before you put the rubber bungs in, put them on the table and move the pistons to the same length, about 20 20 percent. So that before you put the bungs in the top and do them up, the pistons are set to the same level. Because if you have one like this and one like that, once you put the rubber bung in and the tops on, you'll get different rebound rates. So you wanna keep them consistent. So build them together, build them exactly the same. When you put the rubber bung in, very gently do it up. You don't wanna trap air in there. You wanna give it a chance to escape and then a little bit of oil out. Do them the same way and then you will get rebounds. What I tend to do as well, before I fit the springs, is just check your rebound rate. They should be the same. What you don't want is one that locks at 80%, and you don't want one where you press it in and it never comes back. You want the same. So that once you, before you put the springs on, when you put them on the table, push it down and let go, the actual piston will return out at the same rate. One won't fly out and one won't come out slowly. If you can get them to come out correctly, you know that once you put your springs on, you're gonna get the same kind of response from each one, and you're golden. So that's a bit of a long-winded one, but uh, there's some little tips there for you. But actually for building them, it's just the same, same steps regardless. Right, anyway, I waffled on enough about that. Okay, so we're gonna fit these to this, um, which is page 16, number 38. Let's carry on. I have to say I'm super happy with the quality of the BB21 hex wheel hubs and the gold BC18 and BC17 uprights. The machining quality is excellent. Now if you want to splash some cash, you can pick up the Tamiya Hop-Up Option High Capacity Damper Set, which is 47455 VQS 2020. Now from what I can tell, the E1 bumper is no different to the Vanquish version. So I'm gonna pick up two, one for my Vanquish and one for my 2001 Ivanti. Don't forget to use Loctite on these screws as you're screwing through into metal and for sure they will rattle loose if you don't and then you will lose them. Mating the front bulkhead to the chassis can be a little fiddly and you kind of need three hands because you're trying to get the prop shaft to slide in from the front diff to the rear, but you can do it. Okay. 
Okay, so I've just had something really weird happen to the car and it's taken me a while to get my head around it and to fix the issue. Well, now I was at the point where I was putting the front bulkhead on so I joined up the prop shaft between the two. Then purely by chance, I turned the rear wheels like this and as you can see, they are moving in the same direction. That's not what happened. They actually went the opposite direction. So instead of traveling together, they were doing this. So I was like, oh, I've made a mistake and I've done something wrong with the front diff or the rear diff. So I looked through the manual and I opened the access points on the back and the front and everything looked fine. So luckily I've got my vintage Vanquish. So I opened up the top and then I did the same thing. And I looked at which direction the prop shaft was moving because I wanted to figure out if it was the front or the back. And sure enough, it, the prop shaft was going in the other direction when I did this which was then making the front wheels go in the opposite direction to my other car. So I knew something was wrong with the rear. Now I'd already been in the in this access point and it looked fine and I cross-referenced it on the manual so it was not like I'd put it in the wrong way around, which was really strange. So I took the access point top off, the diff cover, and then I looked at it. Now, when the motor's connected up, and when I moved the BA18, which is basically the spur gear and the pinion gear, when I moved it, that all the wheels moved in the right direction. But when I did it from the wheels, the front were in the wrong direction, which was really weird. But I found that the it was slipping. When I was turning from the wheels, it was slipping the ball diff was slipping versus when I actually rotated it from the motor. So if I'd have left it like that, when I put the motor, applied power with the motor, all four wheels would have gone in the right direction. But when I just turned them like this, they went in the wrong direction. So I thought, oh, maybe I've got the diff too tight or not tight enough. So I checked that and that was fine. And then what I found was what stopped it from actually doing it when I do this was the pinion was too tight, the motor pinion was pushed too tight against the BA18, uh, um, is it BA18? BG3. So um, what was happening was the resistance, when I was rolling the wheels, it was the resistance was too high, so it was slipping. Because it was slipping, it means it was actually turning the prop shaft the wrong way which is what happened. So all I did was I loosened off the motor and the pinion a little bit, reset it, and now it's fine. So if you get <laughs> if you get the same thing as me, uh, don't go digging through everything. You've just got to back your motor off a fraction. You've got it too tight. You've got the mesh too tight. That's what it, it would still run fine, but it's just, <laughs> you'll go to do this and you'll be like, why are the wheels going in the wrong direction? So there you go, just something really strange. But uh, that was that's how I managed to fix it. Right, what do we carry on at? Let's skip forward now. Where are we? We've done that. We now move on to fitting the top deck. So we're getting close. And uh, now I've got the wheels on. It starts to look like a real car, but I'll probably have to take the front wheels off. But when I, I only noticed by the front hexes, so I couldn't quite get my head around it. So I put the wheels on to make sense. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> I didn't say it was the brightest tool in the box. So we're now on page 18, number 42. When you're fitting the D1 top plate, be a little bit careful. All the screws look like they're BA7s, but one of them is actually a BA8, which is a three times eight millimeter, so it's shorter. If you actually use a BA7 three times 12 millimeters, you could puncture your battery when you fit it in the tray later on. The screw you now see me fit is the shorter BA8 screw. In the VQS kit, the steering plate, which is BD10, has been upgraded to carbon fiber.
People have been talking about upgrading the steering linkage to the Avanti Black Racing steering, but I haven't looked into it myself. I don't think it's as easy as just a simple swap. Now one thing you can do to improve the VQS steering is to swap out the standard Tamiya servo saver. Now unlike the VQS Cousins, the Avanti, there's a little bit more space in this so you have more options for what electronics you want to have and where you want to place them. I personally use radio link transmitters and receivers because the receivers are just so tiny. This one also has a gyro, link in the description. I know what you're thinking, why is he using an ancient servo? Well, this is all I had really. I had two other servos but they're 35 kg servos and that would be insane. So I'm using this just so I can drive the car and I'll get a replacement online. And there you go, it's all finished. It's fully working. All the steering is done. I've got to true up some of the uh, cambers a little bit, but apart from that, it's all done, it all works. Right, now we move on to the body. Now obviously this kit comes with a fully cut out and fully painted. So all I've got left to do is fit the decals. It does look kind of stealthy like that, I must admit. I kind of quite like it. it kind of looks kind of good like that is fit the decals well cut the decals out fit the decals and paint up the driver so that's what we got to do next so no painting today which is good because the weather is awful so uh, yeah right let's cut them out and keep going Now there's lots of ways to cut out decals, so just go with what works for you. I use scissors, sometimes I use a scalpel, but one way that I apply my decals is I cut a small portion of the backing plate off and then I line it up, put down that little bit and then use that to anchor it. That's how I do it. Up to you how you do yours. Whether you agree or disagree, the pre-painted bodies by Tamiya are excellent quality. One aspect of the re-released body that is very different to the original is the silver cockpit area. In the original Vanquish you had to paint this yourself, but because the body is now delivered to you pre-painted in black, you have to apply stickers. This does give you a different look to what you would have in a Vanquish. One of the challenges of fitting decals is when you have a design that lines up two or three decals traveling all the way down the body. As you can see here, this is how I deal with the line that passes from the front to the rear. There you go i think we'll call that a wrap we're pretty much done i haven't done the driver because i'm going to change the driver for an avanti driver as the canopy it looks so much better so i've got to do two of those so they'll be up and coming i will drive this around the bugrad track as soon as it dries out because i'd love to set a time with it so we're going to do that for sure what do i think build wise lovely easy to do very simple can recommend it to pretty much everyone apart from the very early novice who's never done any car or isn't really mechanically minded but everyone else yeah no problem go for it as a, a, as a, as a build car 
it's nice to see some upgrades. This, the, the drive shafts have been upgraded and a few other little bits and pieces like that, the front uprights, but I don't know whether they did enough. Now, the thing I kind of come away looking at these two cars is, is it gonna sell? Now, the, the, the key reason and comment below, would you buy this kit at this price if it had the six missing bearings or eight missing bearings and it had a limited motor like you get in the Avanti 2011, which is basically a rebranded uh, super stock, I think. So if it had a super stock that was branded VQS 2020, had the bearings, also the G11 and the G5 part was done in reinforced plastic or reinforced carbon plastic or something else like that, would you then think it's worth that money? Or do you think they've just pushed it too far even with those extra bits you still wouldn't entertain it. Comment below because I'd really like to know because I, I kind of wonder whether we'll see a lot of sales of this unit or whether it just won't sell because it's just too overpriced. Anyway, thanks so much. Please like and subscribe. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, head over to our RC Kicks Patreon page as we have loads more RC content on there that comes out that you don't see on the normal Facebook pages. See you soon. Bye-bye.